Hello, Math 8 students. Uh, this lesson is called Dilations Without a Grid. At this point, we've had a bit of practice doing dilations with a grid where we can count how far points are from the center of dilation, but what do we do when we no longer have a grid? That's what we're going to be practicing today. Uh, to get started, we're going to ask uh, to find the center of dilation. So we can see these three figures, A, B, and C, are they look like they're scale copies of one another, so we must have done a dilation. So I want to see if I can find that center of dilation, and our process works the same as before. I can see these corresponding points. That's all the top part of the star. Uh, this bottom left-hand point of the star. Um, those are all corresponding points, so I want to see where they line up. So I'm going to just use a straight edge or a ruler, and I'm going to connect each one of those corresponding points. But I'm kind of imagining where that center is, because I can see if we continue to shrink this, shrink this, shrink this, it's all going to kind of come back into this area. So when I line up those points, I'm going to extend that line in that area, where if it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it's going to go to. I'm going to do the same thing, because just finding one isn't enough, so I'm going to do that with this bottom part, the bottom left corner of the star, line up each of these points and continue if I were to continue shrinking it back and back and back, where would they all go to? And it looks like I'm starting to see an intersection point. Maybe I didn't quite make this one long enough, so let's extend that just a bit more. I can see where those points intersect, but I want to confirm that that is the center of dilation by doing it at least one more point. I'm going to go on this part of the star, lining up that corresponding point and that corresponding point, and I can see that they are all collinear, they're all on that same line, and it does go back to that same intersection point as all of the others. So here is the center of dilation. How did we find it? We uh, drew lines to connect corresponding points. Um, once I drew those lines, I looked for an intersection of those lines. Okay, continuing on, if figure B is the original, estimate the scale factors that will take B to A and B to C. Now these are just estimates, but if this is the original, we can see that B to A is definitely getting smaller. So I need to think about what numbers um, I can use as scale factors that will produce a smaller figure, and what numbers will produce a larger figure, because from B to C it is getting larger. So take a second and make your own estimates. For me, knowing that this is larger, I know that the number needs to be greater than 1. How much greater than 1? Um, that's a little puzzle that we have to solve. And I know this is going to be less than 1, but how much less? Here's the things that I'm looking for. I'm still going to look at corresponding parts, but this time I'm going to look just at this side length right here. When I compare this side length to this one, it looks like maybe it's about half um, maybe it's going to take two of those side lengths to make this one, maybe a little bit less. So my estimate is going to be um, r is equal to two-thirds. That will be just enough to shrink it, not quite half of the size, probably about two-thirds of the size. And I'm going to continue that strategy. If I look at just this side length here, and I try and compare it to the side length over here, I can see it's not going to take two full ones. That's a little bit too small for that. So maybe one and a half. So my estimate here is that this uh, scale factor to go from B to C is maybe going to be one and a half. No, those are not precise. Those are just estimates to get um, our juices flowing as we move on to this next problem. Uh, now we're actually going to be performing those dilations. So here we have figure D, E, F, G, H, and we need to dilate this figure with scale factor two point H is the center. Remember when we're doing our dilations, we need these two pieces of information, the scale factor that tells us how it changes, and the center of dilation that tells us where all of the points expand and contract from. And this first part, H, is the center. So that means all of the points are going to expand and contract from H. Here's what I'm going to do. Just like here, I knew that all of the corresponding parts were collinear, so I drew a line that would connect all of those points going to the center. 
I'm going to do the same thing even though now I know the center. So I know that H and E are going to be on the same line as E prime. And I know that H and D are going to be on the same line as D prime. So I'm just expanding each of those out so that I can see F is probably, or F prime is probably going to be somewhere on this line, and G prime is going to be somewhere on that line. So it, showing that when I expand from H as the center of dilation, everything is going to expand outward, but they're going to remain collinear. So now how do we judge if it is a distance of two or if the scale factor is two? So we have a couple of different strategies here. Uh, one strategy is kind of a lazy strategy, but it definitely works, especially when we are making things bigger or smaller in easy amounts. So I'm just going to compare this distance h to e. h to e with the scale factor of 2, that means I'm going to have 1 and 2 of those. So that is where e prime is now going to be, because this is the original distance, and I am now doubling that. So e prime is going to stay on that line, but it is now twice the distance. So that is one option. Again, it works great if you're dealing with uh, pieces that are easy, like if you're doubling. That just means I'm going to take this length here and duplicate it, keeping it on that same line, and now I can see where d prime is going to be. That's option one. Another option is with an accurate measuring device, like a ruler. So I can measure the distance from the center of dilation to one of the points. Not easy to do with this technology, so thank you for your patience as I try and finagle this. I'm going to line up H and F, and I'm going to measure that distance. That distance looks like it is 1 and 3 eighths of an inch, so I would need to double 1 and 3 eighths of an inch, or I can kind of repeat that same process one and three eighths of an inch again from that point that I just left off is going to be one and one, two, three eighths of an inch, and that is going to be my F prime. So that is another option. And that option works out best when we are dilating with the scale factor of one half when we're shrinking. We want to be able to measure and then be able to cut it in half. Um, I'm going to go with my preferred way. My preferred way is when possible. I'm just going to go from H to G, and then I'm going to duplicate it to show two of them with a scale factor of two. So there is my G prime. And now that I have drawn each of those, then I can simply connect those. Looks like I might have been just a hair off, and that happens sometimes, so just do the best that you can. Some things that I'm checking for to ensure that I have done this correctly. Um, all of the segments that I draw should be parallel to the original. So I should be able to pick this one up and see that it is parallel. Um, so that's a great way to judge. This one appears to be parallel to that one, so I feel like I have done that correctly. Uh, let's move on to part B, dilate with the scale factor of one half now. If I'm dilating with the scale factor of one half, this is where that ruler is definitely going to come in handy because now the distance from H to G is going to be cut in half. So again, give me your patience here as I try and get this all lined up. One of the times when technology is going to be more difficult than real life. Okay, measuring this distance, so I'm going from the center to this point here, G, and to me that appears to be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths. So I need to half that. So in my calculator, I might do seven eighths times one half. That is going to give me seven sixteenths. So as I'm counting now, instead of paying attention to the eighths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sixteenths, that is going to be my new point. I'm going to call that one G double prime. Since I already have a G prime, I'm going to call this one G double prime. I'm going to continue to repeat that process, measuring the distance from the center of dilation to each one of the vertices. Since we do not have a grid to count those distances, we're actually measuring those distances with a measuring device. So from H to F, that appears to be, let's see, 1 and 
one, two, three eighths. So I'm going to multiply that by one half and I am going to get 11 sixteenths. If you're looking to do this in your calculator, what I just did in my head is I converted this to a mixed number. So that is going to be 8, 9, 10, 11 sixteenths multiple, or sorry, multi 11 eighths. I'm sorry, 11 eighths. Multiply that by one half and then I'm going to get um, 11 sixteenths. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 sixteenths. And that is going to be my F double prime. Again, continuing on until I can find each of these points. If you have an index card, you can always measure this distance from H to F, then fold that distance in half, fold it on itself, and then you'll see uh, just exactly where that is going to be. So an index card might be a little bit quicker than using the ruler. Uh, measuring this, I have one, two, three. Oh, it's the same distance, that one and three eighths which was 11 eighths, multiply that by one half, that's going to be 11 sixteenths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 sixteenths. Let me count again. There we go. 11 sixteenths, and that's going to be my E double prime. And continuing on, just have to go H to D. And again, looking for simple ways to do this, an index card might be your best friend here. If you're confident with how you measure with a measuring device like a ruler, then that is also great. So from H to D, it looks like I have 7 eighths. So I already measured that one. 7 eighths is now going to be 7 sixteenths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 sixteenths. And there is D double prime. So now that I've got all of those points in place, now I can connect them to actually create that figure. Again, as I'm doing this, I'm hoping that the points, um, when I draw the shape, are going to create parallel lines, parallel to the original figure. So it appears that E, e double prime, F double prime is parallel to EF. That's a, a good indicator that I have done this correctly. Okay, uh, for the next type of problem, it remains the same. The difference is now the center of dilation is no longer a figure or a point in the figure. It is away from the figure. So the only thing that that changes is now here, I drew those lines and it looked like it was still attached to the figure. Here when I draw these lines, I am now going to go P all the way through. And for some reason, this software does not like me trying to draw those straight lines through P. So you'll have to just bear with me on trying to get those as close as I can. I don't think it's going to allow me to do this other one. All right, I had a do it off recording, but I got them as close as I possibly can. Um, same thing, dilate with the scale factor of two. That means I'm going to just measure from P to this point right here. And since it's a scale factor of two, that means all I'm going to do is simply double that. And I know that it's going to remain on that line. And so this is going to be that new point. I'm going to repeat. This is my favorite way if I can get away with not having to measure with a measuring device, then I'm definitely going to do that. So I can just do this with my index card, take that distance and duplicate it. And my line wasn't quite long enough, but if we can trust this one, we're going to say that it's about right there. I'm going to keep on going. And hopefully after this, um, you will get the idea on what we're going to be doing. There's my distance of one. But now I need to duplicate that. And so that point is going to be about here. So we can still do all of these dilations, even if we do not have a grid. We just have to take the time to be a little bit more precise with our measurements. So here is that distance duplicated. And that is going to put that point right here. Now I did not name, oops. I did not name these points, so I do not have a name for the figure, but I'm going to connect each one of these red to purple, purple to green, green to orange, and orange to red. And it appears that each of the lines that I just created appears to be parallel to the original. 
Okay, and that creates that scale factor of two or dilation with scale factor two. Uh, that's it. I'd like to do more, but we're short on time. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.